Hey guys, it's Lucky Ghost here, and today we're going to go over my top 10 tips for Starfield. These are hopefully going to save you a little frustration, a lot of time, and maximize your enjoyment of the game. This is going to be a spoiler-free guide, so don't worry about that. Now, let's dive in. Tip number one, your best friend for dealing with your inventory early on before you have more space elsewhere is going to be your safe in your room in the lodge. This is going to be the room that you get really early on when you join the explorers, and so you just come into your room, and right back here in the corner is a safe. The reason this is so incredibly useful is it is infinite storage. You cannot fill it up. If we look at it here, it says mass dash out of dash, right? So I keep dumping things in here. Now there are some downsides to this. You won't have access to this storage when you're on another planet, when you're somewhere else, right? This is kind of your deep storage, your cold storage. You put it here when it's something you want to hold on to, but you're not going to need anytime soon. It's really useful for that. Alternatively, there's other ways to deal with your inventory problems. And one is going to be the weightlifting perk here. What points into this is something you'll probably never regret. It's going to increase your carry capacity as well as gain 50% resistance to stagger when it's maxed out. And stagger is one of those things that's really annoying when it happens. So that happening 50% less is great. Plus that 100 extra kilograms of storage is going to feel nice. If you're anything like me, if you're someone that has to pick up every cool thing they find, you're probably going to want this. The next thing you're going to do for your inventory... The next way you can solve inventory problems is by taking advantage of your companion. You can talk to them and say, let's trade gear and they can hold up to about 135 weights. So you can go ahead and put 135 weight worth of items on them. Another thing to know about your companion storage is if you start crafting or doing research, it will not pull from their inventory. So try to put things on them like guns, armor, really heavy items that you're just going to sell when you get a chance, but not crafting materials that you're going to need when you go to craft something or when you go to research something because then you're gonna have to stop pull it off of them put it on you craft and then put it back on them and that's just kind of tedious so they're gonna be best used for putting like these heavy items you know weapons spacesuits and that kind of stuff one thing that you can do if you're really struggling with your inventory is so we go to our inventory while we're talking to our companion and we can click on all and now we can sort by weight so we're looking at the heaviest item we're carrying around and we can give that item to them, right? And the next heaviest item we're willing to separate ourselves with, we can keep giving them items. I've now filled her up so she can't pick any more up and getting this error up here in the top right to signify she's full. She can't take on any more weight. Okay, no problem. I'll put my stuff elsewhere then. But sorting by weight when you're trying to sort your weight woes out is a really handy thing to do. All right, the next way that you can deal with your inventory issues are when you are on your spaceship. So when you get to your spaceship, one of the things you can do is you can open up your inventory and you can click cargo hold. And this is going to allow you to store things on the spaceship. And every spaceship is going to have its own amount of cargo that it's going to be capable of holding. Early on, the cargo hold is going to be pretty small, but there's a lot that you can do to increase that. Fortunately, I'll show you how to do that real quick here. But first, let's talk about the cargo hold. So you can just click on the cargo hold. Now we are looking at my ship's cargo. It's called the Ecliptic Combat. I stole it. I didn't name it that. That's just what it was named. OK, so we can now put items into the cargo hold if we want to. So I would go to my inventory. Now I'm looking at this is kind of confusing. I know. OK, so let's start that process over because this is easy to mix up and start moving items the wrong way. OK, so we open up our inventory, then we click cargo hold. Now we are looking at our ship's cargo. This is the stuff the ship is holding, but we want to go to our inventory. Now we're still in trade with the cargo hold, even though we are now looking at our inventory here. So it's our inventory being put into the cargo hold. I think the UI could be a little bit clearer here. So we can choose what things we want to put into the ship's cargo hold. So I'm going to go ahead and put all white weapons, right? Because I'm just going to sell those. I don't need to carry those around with me. I'm past the point where I'm using white weapons, really. Um, space suit. OK, yeah, OK. And then um, might put resources in because resources can be very heavy once you start getting big stacks of like aluminum and ores of various types, right? So you put that stuff in there and that is another very, very good way to manage your inventory. Now, the nice thing about putting stuff on your ship is that when you put stuff on your ship, it's going to be wherever you are, which means if you're at an outpost trying to craft, it can pull from your ship. If you're at the lodge trying to craft, it can pull from your ship. If you're at an NPC vendor on a planet, you can sell the stuff from your ship. So all of these places will have access to your ship. It's one of the nice things about ship storage versus companion storage or versus the lodge storage. You can't sell from those places. If you put stuff there, you can't go to a, like a merchant 
and try to sell the items from there. Whereas if you put stuff on your ship, you pretty much always have access to it when you need it. It's very convenient storage, which is why it's so nice that we can increase the amount of cargo that our ship can hold. So if we exit the ship here, and this is in the main town, the first one that you're going to have access to. So I'm going to show you what you do here because it's going to be the most relevant for you while you're playing the game. This is Jemison. Now, this guy right here, he will let you modify your ship and the terminal next to him is where you can sell your junk. So I could open this up. So while I'm in here in the sell section, I am first in vendor sell. And now I can see all the stuff that's on me. If I want to sell from the ship, I have to click here buy. Then I click buy. Then I click sell. And then I can click sell from ship inventory. It's a little bit of a, a task to get to your ship's inventory there. It's, I think this is another thing that might be cleaned up by the time it launches or maybe very soon after. But now we can sell all this. Look at that. Now, granted, this specific NPC only has about 5,000 credits to start with, so I'm just about done selling to it already, and I've got so much more stuff to sell. Okay, so it's now got zero credits left. If I try to sell it, it's gonna warn me, hey, you're not gonna get any money if you do this. You're just basically giving it to the guy for free, and you can choose to do that, but be careful of that warning. I don't want to do that. I already gave him enough stuff for free just now. And I guess this is a good time to mention that if you ever do something like that, just load your last save. It's not a big deal. I'm nothing really lost. So ship services technicians, so we talked to this guy, right? And we go, I want to modify my ship. And in here, we can say ship builder. Let's go and hover over a section of the ship. Let's put this here so it's not in the way. By the way, I have an entire section of my complete beginner guide. I'll link it down in the description that explains shipbuilding in great detail. I might even do another dedicated video to it because I think it's a topic that deserves one. It's complicated enough to warrant it. But if this part of this guide is confusing to you, definitely after this video, check out the shipbuilding guide and I'll link that in the description down below. Definitely check out the beginner guide where I have a shipbuilding section in the timestamps. Okay, so here you would just attach like a section, a hab for instance, and then on this you would attach cargo. Right. And boom, I just put this little tiny cargo hold on there. Right now, this ship can now hold 3,005. If we delete that cargo we had added, it's 2760. Right. So it added a good chunk of storage there. That's more storage than my character can hold. Right. So that's a good bit. Just that little one. These bigger ones store even more. So that's another way to get more storage on your ship. Definitely take advantage of it. It's really easy to do. And adding cargo to your ship is incredibly inexpensive. It's not bad at all. You know, it's one of those things where even if you feel like the ship's not your forever ship, you can still add some cargo to it while you're using it to make your life a little bit easier. On the topic of inventory management, one of the things you should never leave behind when you're deciding what and what not to carry is ammo. Ammo, as you'll notice, weighs nothing. So always grab ammo. You see ammo, grab it. You never know what cool weapon you're going to find later on that is going to use that ammo. And I can't tell you how many cool weapons I have that I don't really have ammo for because there's lots of different types of ammo and there's lots of different types of cool weapons. And ammo is going to be probably the number one inhibitor for you using your favorite weapon more often than you want to. So on that topic, this is another tip then, be sure to have a variety of ammunition type weapons. So have a shotgun that you really like, have a ballistics weapon that you really like, have a laser weapon that you really like, right? Have an, a different arsenal of weapons that you really like and have them bound to your wheel. So we have a wheel here that we can put items on. This is really, really useful. In order to put items here, we go back to our inventory, we go to our weapon, and then down here it says to favorite an item, press B. So we would just click B and then we just click the slot that we want to put that weapon on. Very simple to do. And then in combat, you press the button that the game tells you to press. On PC, it's Q and it brings this up and you can just click this on the fly. Please note that the game does not pause while this is open. It look. We can see the guy in the background. The game moves slow, but it's not pausing. So just be aware the enemies can still attack you when you're trying to decide what weapon to use. So it does slow them way down. It gives you plenty of time to choose, but just know you can't use this as a pause feature and walk away in combat or something like that. Before we continue, if you guys are enjoying the video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It helps way more than you know, and I'll be putting out a ton more Starfield content for you guys to enjoy. Thanks. Now let's get back to the video. Another really useful thing to know is sometimes you might lose your companion for one reason or another. You might be out and about somewhere and your companion disappears. Maybe you did a quest. They couldn't come along. Maybe you told them to stay somewhere because you didn't want them to see some atrocity you were about to commit and judge you for it. Right. If that happens and you lose track of your companion, you can come in here, go to your ship, click on crew, and then here you can assign the missing companion to your ship. Unassigned 
somebody else now assign the companion that's missing to your ship. And then the next time you get in your ship, your companion will be there and you can tell them to follow you again. Very handy to know. OK, next, let's talk about afflictions. OK, so when you're going to be playing the game, you'll be on some planet and uh, down here on the bottom left corner, you see the little orange circle with the drop inside of it. In that area, you'll see your afflictions listed. Like if you're bleeding, if you're poisoned, there will be a different symbol there telling you as much. And one way to get rid of afflictions is to come into your aid and you look for an item that deals with that. So this one says it treats infections and it puts that little triangle with the pill in it. So if you see that triangle with the pill in it on your watch down in the bottom left there, you know you consume this item and then it now treats your infection. You no longer have that infection. Alternatively, you could just leave the infection there. Most of the time, the status effects are pretty mild. I almost always just ignored those down there. So, you know, there were some times where it was slowly bleeding my health away, which was kind of annoying. But for the most part, they're very, very minor drawbacks relative to everything else that's going on in the game. So you can look for an aid item. If you have it, use it. If you don't have it, it's not the end of the world. But alternatively, if you want to get rid of it, you can do a couple of other things. One thing you can do is find a bed and sleep. So if you sleep in this game, it's going to do a couple of things for you. Actually, a few really cool things for you. It's going to heal you back up to full health. It's going to remove any afflictions that you have. Actually, afflictions will fall off in a matter of a day or two. So by sleeping one to two days, they just naturally fall off by making that time pass. But it's also going to heal you. And then also a really nice thing that sleeping does is it gives you a rested XP buff for 24 hours. So you sleep and then for the next 24 hours in game, your character is getting 10% more XP, which is really useful because you are always going to be wishing you had more skill points. And the only way to get these skill points is to level. So that rested XP trick that you get is so nice. Definitely take advantage of that. And it's going to help you level up, you know, 10% faster. So the final way to heal yourself or cure yourself of afflictions is to come to Reliant Medical or any doctor in whatever town you're in, and they will be able to patch you right up. They can remove any afflictions you have, poison, bleed, infection. They can take you back to full health. They can even undo some choices you made when you were creating your character. Like if you chose to have alien blood in you and you don't want that anymore, they can go ahead and remove that for you. So that's the last way to deal with afflictions and all that kind of good stuff. The next thing we'll talk about is fast traveling. There's a lot of great ways to fast travel. One of the easiest ones is just to open up your scanner, look at a location. And then by looking at that location, if it's gray, that means you haven't been there. If it's white, that means you have been there. Gray and black, white and black. So if it's white, you've been there, you can fast travel there. You just click the button right here fast travel on the bottom and you say yes and it'll take you to that location right the next thing you can do to fast travel is you can open up your menu of quests that you have or your missions and this button is l on pc you'll have to look and see what the bind is on console but you open it up and from here you can just click on a quest and just click on this one here and you can click this and see how this turned blue now when i say set course it's going to take me straight to that location the great thing about fast traveling this way is you skip a ton of load screens. You skip the load screen from changing from this zone to the zone with your spaceship in it and then from the zone from your spaceship in it to being in your spaceship and then from your spaceship being on the ground to your spaceship being in space and then from your spaceship being in space above this planet to your spaceship being above that other planet, right? You skip all those load screens that you would otherwise do manually and there's nothing wrong with doing those manually if you want, especially in the beginning. It's quite fun, but eventually you're going to get to a point where you're like, I just want to be there and so we could just hold this down and now we're going to go through a qu one quick load screen instead of all of those stages where you get in the ship, take off, gravity jump, land, travel through the instances, and then finally get into Neon. We just got into Neon instantly. One load screen. It's fantastic. Definitely take advantage of fast travel like that when you're able to. Now, it's worth noting that you cannot fast travel from everywhere. Sometimes you'll be in a place and you'll try to fast travel and it won't go off. Just keep trying and usually somewhere in the top right of your screen, a notification will come up and it'll say you can't fast travel because you're encumbered or you can't fast travel because you're docked to the space station or you can't fast travel because you're in combat, right? It'll tell you the reason. Oh, also, you can't fast travel when you're in the air. So if you jump and then try to fast travel, it won't work. You got to wait until you're landed and firmly planted on the ground before you can fast travel. Just some things to know about fast traveling there, but definitely that's a good one to take advantage of. And that's going to make it a lot easier to get the quest. I think one of the early things that people are going to struggle with is like they're doing a quest and they're like, oh man, how do I get from here to the other side of the galaxy? And the step can feel a little overwhelming when you're first starting and you have no idea where you are or what anything is, I guess. And to that end, you know, when you're brand new to the game, the galaxy, I mean, the systems to be aware of. So this is a system here. This is a system. This is a system, right? These are all systems. And 
Soul is going to be one that you go to a lot. That's where, you know, where Earth is and all of that good stuff. Mars, right? And then Alpha Centauri. This is one that you're going to want to know. This is where your lodge is. So if you're ever looking at this and you're like, crap, how do I get back to the lodge? I just want to go back. Don't worry. I felt the same way at one point. And you just click on Alpha Centauri. It's going to show you here it is. And it's going to be on Jemison. OK, that's how you get back home. If you ever need to go back there to talk to someone to take care of something, to store something away, it's right there. Just a heads up. Items worth saving. What items are worth saving? You're going to find a lot of junk out in the wild. One of the items worth saving is going to be anything with gray text. This is an item you can use in crafting. So definitely hold on to items with gray text. That is something you can use uh, for research and for crafting, right? So that's going to be worth it. Whereas items like this antique videotape, this is not worth holding on to. We can sell it. It's not really good for anything else, to my knowledge, other than to sell. Now, just be aware of the fact that the miscellaneous category is mostly going to fill up with junk, but unfortunately, it's not 100% junk. Your digipics, the things you use to lockpick, are going to go into your miscellaneous tab, unfortunately. So you can't just come in here and sell everything in here because, trust me, I made that mistake and it sucked. <laughs> so don't do that. You're going to have to choose what you sell from this tab when you go to town. Most of it will be crap. You know, you're going to get plates and miscellaneous things in there that you don't need. But then there's also like weird items that you do need tucked into there, unfortunately. I really wish they had made a separate tab for the stuff you could use and the stuff that was literally only good for selling. This is a quick tip about your skills and your perks and everything like that. There's some things in this game that you literally can't do until you have the skill associated with them, like pickpocketing. You cannot pickpocket until you unlock theft. So you're going to grab that if you want to be able to pickpocket people. You can't use a jetpack until you unlock boost pack training. So make sure you grab that if you want to do that. You can't fly cool ships unless you level up piloting. So make sure you level up piloting. You can't unlock anything beyond a novice chest or security door or anything like that unless you level up security. So these ones are ones you're definitely going to want to level up almost no matter what you're doing in this game. Weightlifting is not one that's required. Like you can carry weight. This just make you better at it, right? Whereas those ones, you can't really do it at all until you level it up. So just something to know about. Something to know is you can romance your companions, right? So you got a companion and she's following you around or he's following you around. You can choose to try to flirt with them and to romance them. The game will tell you. It'll give you an option. It'll say, do you want to flirt with them? It'll put flirt in brackets and then there's an option to choose, allowing you to flirt with that companion. Sometimes the companions will be into it. Sometimes it'll be too soon, right? And one way that you can help improve your rapport with your companion is to do things they like. It'll tell you on the top right of your screen, Sarah liked that, or it'll say Sarah disliked that. And when you're doing something you know Sarah's going to dislike, for instance, she's pretty much a morally sound individual. She doesn't like murder and she kind of doesn't like stealing, but she doesn't seem to dislike stealing, if that makes sense. It's not going to take a rapport hit, at least that I could tell. But if I killed the wrong person in front of her, she would definitely dislike it. And her attitude towards me would be worse off for it. So if that happens, you can, you know, if you know you're going to go into a room and the only way to complete the quest, maybe you're doing a quest for some unsavory individuals, or maybe you're pretending to be part of someone as like a, a double agent, right? And she's going to see you doing things that you kind of have to do for that quest, but she's not going to be a fan of them. So you could just say, hey, wait here a moment and she'll stay there and you can go into the other room, do the bad things <laughs> and she won't see it, right? We'll go around the corner, we'll go do the bad things, right? And she won't dislike it when we do it. And then we can come back after we do the bad things she doesn't like and we can just say, hey, all right, let's get moving again. And she's like, all right, let's go, okay? Another thing that's uh, worth noting about companions is if you find a really cool weapon, but it's not as good as what you're using and so you don't want to use it, but you think, hey, you know what would be cool is if my comp Oh, this officer is getting very close to us here. You could have your companion wear it. So your companion, you can see her inventory and you can tell her what you want her to wear. You know, you could be like, hey, don't use this. Use this sweet weapon I gave you instead. And so down here, it tells you what the button is on PC. It says B. So we would just click B. And now she's using that item. We could click on spacesuits and we could tell her what spacesuit we want her to wear. We could click jetpacks and we tell her what jetpack we want her to wear. Right. And really buff her up. So make sure when you are loading out your character, you're going to find way more cool stuff than you need. Share some of the extra stuff with your companions that you have following you around. Yeah, I see you, sir. All right, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more Starfield content. I'm going to be making a ton of it. If you are thirsty for more Starfield content right now, be sure to check out my complete beginner guide in the description below. I will link it there. It's going to be absolutely amazing. That is an absolutely massive guide with really in-depth explanations for literally every system in the game. So if you really want to understand Starfield, you really want to watch that guide. Thanks so much for watching. And also massive shout out to my YouTube channel members. Thanks so much for being a member 
member of this channel. If you want to become a member, click the join button down below for behind the scenes footage, access to a private Discord channel where you can reach me anytime and more. If you're not sure what to do next, maybe swing by my Twitch stream over at twitch.tv slash lucky ghosts or check out one of these videos popping up on screen right now.